Hey everybody, welcome to Live at Five. My name is Ryan Lee Gilbert. I'm Paul Bontorek. What's the date, Ryan? It is October 19th, 2017. And who's the guest? Our guest is Jessica Malaski, who I'm very excited to oh chat with. Look at this. I love her voice so much. Now, I didn't know she she painted this. We just found this we out. We just found out she Wait, painted this. Here. This is amazing. This is her Joni Mitchell album, Portraits of Joni. Which, mm -hmm. and Ryan will be talking to her about it. But she painted that, you guys. Super what? talented. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Anyway, yeah. We're going to discuss we all about that. you do a portrait yeah. of me? <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll get to her, but yes. there's the big news today. We have we, some we big news. We finally found out some Angels in America So, news. yes, we, we've known about the Angels in America coming to Broadway for a while. We knew that Russell Tovey probably wasn't coming over, and then we found out today it will be Lee Pace playing Joe Pitt in Angels he's, in America. He's super talented. He's incredibly talented. I say this is a huge fan of Pushing Daisies and Halting Catch Fire. He was also in The Normal Heart on Broadway, of course. He's done a ton of off Broadway stuff, but he will be starring alongside Andrew Garfield, Nathan Lane, and that wonderful cast when the show comes to Broadway on February 23rd, 2018, and opening on March 23rd. And Joe Pitt is, of course, the conflicted He's Mormon. The, yes, who Stephen Spinella has said needs to be exotically gorgeous oh. for it all to kind of work. Because you to put up with all of Joe's behavior and his quirks, he has to Lee be Pace super. Is exotically and gorgeous. He, he is gorgeous. So Good it's casting. Well done. Uh, so the cruel, and I mean, there's so many movie music, movies to musicals, right? Yes, I mean, everyone's one, talking about Mean Girls. I love this movie. Uh, but Cruel Intention. You love Cruel Intentions? I love Cruel Intentions. It's not in theaters. 1999 film, <laughs> Cruel Intentions, <laughs> which is, of course, based on Dangerous Liaisons, yes. which is sort of my go-to. Mm -hmm. But I like Cruel Intentions, too. But there's a musical of it. Yeah. And they did it at, what, La, La Poussin Rouge. Yes. I don't speak French. <laughs> but they did like a trial. They did like a test run, a pop-up mm -hmm. run. And now it's coming back. Uh, on November 17th, which is not too far off, and they just announced a cast. It's a have some great cast. Amazing Broadway talents in it. So, Lauren Zakrin, who was in, she was just in Great Comet, but mm -hmm. she was in Rock of Ages, she will be playing Catherine, the Sarah Michelle Gellar role. That's Did I say her name right? Yeah, Gellar. Sarah Michelle I, it took Gellar. me a long time to yeah. learn Gellar. Yeah. I used to call her Gellar. <laughs> um, Along with the rest. Constantine Rizzuli. Uh, who was in Wicked and Hairspray. Mm -hmm. He'll be playing Sebastian, Ryan Felipe's mm -hmm. very sexy role. Yes. And Carrie St. Louis, who is a friend of Broadway.com, I like Absolutely. to think, who is just Glinda in Wicked, and of course also in Rock of Ages. She's playing Annette, the Reese Witherspoon. That's so my she's the one they mess with. She's the one that they try. Oh, she and she'll be here to talk about it. Yes, very She's soon. the one that they yeah take the bet on, see if he can they, flower yeah, right. her. Yeah, they both yeah seduce her and mess her up. Yeah, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Dangerous Liaisons. <laughs> I'm sorry, I always have to relate it to Dangerous Liaisons. I can't help it. Uh, the cast also includes Jesse Shelton as Cecile, Alex Boniello, who's, who's been in the in cast for a Lincoln, while as right? Blaine, and Jesse was also in it before, and Brian Muller, another returning cast member as Greg, and also Matthew Griffin as Ronald. So this thing starts November 17th, opens December 11th. And it's being billed as a limited run through January 29th. And I think it's going to be really cool because they, I can't wait. they use the space in really cool ways. And I love Love Place. It's going to be on fun. Rouge. Yes. Also, some awards are being given out. It is award season kicking off. The Dramatist Guild of America will present David Yazbek with the 2010 Frederick Lowe Award for the band's visit, which I just secured my tickets to recently. I can't wait to see that. And Paula Vogel wins the Hull Werner Award for Indecent. And they, they will be honored October 23rd at the Cava Cafe. Also, Julie Taymor, who is returning to the Broadway boards with M. Butterfly. Oh my God, I'm seeing it tonight. Are you? Spoiler, I'm seeing M. Oh Butterfly. Oh my God, I'm so, I'm excited. so excited for that. I'm excited. I, I also got those. She's getting the Stage Directors and Choreographer Foundation's Mr. Abbott Award, which is named after the legendary director George Abbott. And she's being honored for outstanding artistry and creativity over her career. And the gala for that will be April 2nd, 2018, at a location to be announced. TBD. TBD. TBD, we don't know where yet. Uh, other news, When I Grow Up, Tim mentions children's book based on his amazing song from Matilda. Broadway.com Audience of Choice Thank award you. winning it, song. Oh. It, did, it did win favorite new song, and I was <laughs> just trying to remember if that was true, and you're right, it did yeah. win. So he decided to write a book because once you know, he had once a, you win that, he, once, you, once win you win that, you got to write a book of it. Absolutely. So it's a children's book. Uh, it's coming out March 27th, which is actually really far off, so... I mean, you can probably on Matt Rodin's birthday sure in six months. You can like pre-order it on you Amazon, can get, though. What's the advantage of pre-ordering on Amazon? Well, it it, like, give, it drums up a little. Like they know how many to print. Makes They're Tim like, well, people are excited, good. but absolutely, <laughs> do it for Who Tim. Yeah. Do it for Tim. Order one of those. Uh, order them for every child. And it's you also know. delivered to you on the day it publishes. Okay. So you don't have to wait. 
Or you can go to a bookstore. They oh, still have to, they're still they some still bookstores. Have bookstores yeah. uh, John Nelson Conley, who we love, um, is joining the Sci-Fi Show Tremors, which I'm is genuinely been, excited. This for. is this is the Kevin Bacon movie. <laughs> Uh, As about you describe. worms that almost destroy. <laughs> Brian was laughing at my description. Worms that almost destroy a Nevada town. That is what it's about. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a campy movie. It, it is. It'll be a campy but it's TV like a show. Cult classic. And John Nelson yeah. Conley is hilarious. He's and so he's great. also very dramatic. He can do it all. And sing Full Monty. Yes. Annie yeah, Golden absolutely. and John Nelson Conley. There's nothing better than that. I, love that show. Uh, I think he was on the to- sitting on the toilet, mm-hmm. singing to his belly. Absolutely. Such a good moment. Oh my God, that show. Uh, anyway, that comes out next year on Sci Fi. And also. Happy first performance to Mr. Yay. John Leguizamo, Welcome who back. is bringing his Latin history for morons to Studio 54, and tonight is the first show. Can't wait. All right. Let's take a quick break. That's it. And when we come back, here? we will be back with Jessica Mulaski. So join us. Bye. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Because I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass, I'm waving through a window. Throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raise the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Love, sugar, butter, flour. Broadway's Come From Away is a Best Musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away. The remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the She world. has appeared in over a dozen Broadway shows, including a lot of your favorites, and she just released her sixth album earlier this year. Please welcome Jessica Mulaski. Ooh. Welcome to the studio, Jessica. I'm, Thank you. I th- was just thinking, like, if when I grew up in the bowels of Connecticut <laughs> with no internet before the anything, yes, yeah. if this show had been in my life, <laughs> it would have changed my life. Right? It's right? so exciting. We get to the, the fact that we get to engage with some of your favorite people and then you get to engage back. We we love it here. We love our life. I was just five. in the basement with my little <laughs> night music record right. clutched to my chest. Yeah. So I, I also grew up in Connecticut. You did? I did. I grew in a little town called Stafford Springs, Connecticut. Wow, which you beat no me. one's probably ever heard of. I never of. heard That's, of that. <laughs> but let's let's talk about again for you to get a good look here. Sixth album from Jessica Malaski, Portraits of Joni. Where did the, now I know this started off as uh, Lincoln Center mm-hmm. asked you to do an American songwriter's performance, right? right? Uh, mm-hmm. Songbook. Um, is, so, and you just said, oh, I want to do Joni Mitchell. I did. I mean, actually, when I was clutching my, my Little Night Music record, mm-hmm. LP, I was also clutching uh, Court and Spark, which is a Joni Mitchell, beautiful, magnificent uh Record. And these are ones that your mom brought home from yeah. her job at uh-huh. the radio, at the radio show, station. Yeah. And when John Nakagawa and Charles came and said, you want to do one? I said, I've got to do Joni. Mm-hmm. And so that what started happening was people who would come see us at the Carlisle, my husband and I, and they'd say, oh, I want to get that record of that concert. And yeah. more, enough people said it to me that I thought, okay. So I got my daughter and my whole family, and we made this record. Go. And it's your daughter who sings with you on Big Yellow Taxi, and is that yes, right? Yes, and yeah. plays the guitar. Oh, on, fantastic. And Little Green as well. Yeah. Uh, a 17 year old daughter at the time. Yeah. She has a beautiful voice. Thank you. I will have to I say. I hope she doesn't go into showbiz. <laughs> I have to say, I my very first, this is a little embarrassing, so I know you got to know Joni Mitchell when you were young, when your yes. mom brought home that record. I didn't really know who Joni Mitchell was until I saw the movie Love, actually, oh. and Emma Thompson, and the whole thing with Alan Rickman, which is heartbreaking, but it did turn me on, so I, then I went home and like listened to. How did you How did you find which songs that you wanted to, to cover? And so Tell me a little bit about your process of making that show and this record happen. Well, I mean, because it was a show that we did first, I did want it to have sort of an arc. Because Mm -hmm. nobody really listens to albums anymore. You know, they'll just download a couple of things here and there. Whatever songs. But yeah, but I still think it's important to make something that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so um, that's partly how we chose it. And I wanted to make sure there was a 
decent enough cross-section of, mm-hmm. of her records. And, and that's the whole thing. You know, people are saying, well, you're so brave to tackle Joni Mitchell songs. And I think, well, but exactly. They need to be out again. Yeah, they need absolutely. to not just be, well, I mean, her records were magnificent, but they need to, to be like Gershwin songs. They need mm-hmm. to keep on living or Sondheim songs. Right. So. And do you have to, like, was there a process for you where you kind of just got to pick whatever songs or did you have to, like, go through a record label to get rights to songs or were you kind of... I didn't ask anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I not think to. most of the time <laughs> if you record something, then you have to register it so that you, that mm-hmm. you pay publishing on it when you sell things. But most of the time you don't ask permission. You just um, do your you just you do, do your take. Yeah, yeah, you just try not to change it too much. I mean, I remember when we first started taking doing jazz versions of Stephen Sondheim stuff. He, you know, said to me at a party, "You're, you're reharmonizing my songs," you know. And mm. then he said, "Well, just don't change the lyrics." So, did which was a really to... nice moment. <laughs> I broke out into a flop sweat. You can imagine, yeah. Can <laughs> but imagine. um, but yeah, I know you just you know hope for the best. Sometimes with the, you know composers, it's a little. You don't can't change it too much, but we right. did try to put our own stamp on. Yeah, and so you say we, this is your husband, yeah. John Hisrell. You recently celebrated your nineteenth wedding anniversary. Yeah, is that right? twenty years. Is, Cong- yes, congratulations. Thank That's you. That's amazing. I know. That's amazing. You stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> so how what is your how is your collaborative process when it comes to building your shows and these records together? Has it is it a, well? We met doing seamless? a Broadway show, right? Called Dream. Silence. <laughs> I like to say that the run of that show was nine of the most wonderful days of my life. Absolutely. Um, but we and we collaborated on that show. So before we even became a couple, we had already been p- pretty well versed in how to like say, hey, what if we did this song like this? Uh, and then we just kept doing it more and more. And like this year is our thirteenth year at the Cafe Carlisle in the yeah. fall. And uh, you know we we're in the trenches now. Say, what if we tried this song like this? Right. And you know, and, and even we've been doing it so long now that Stephen Sondheim, we wore him down. He doesn't mind it anymore. <laughs> right. And I've heard you you said that um, your husband's the only person you would want to sort of do this, and it w- from now on, right? Like yeah. collaborating with your husband's kind yeah. of like the the. the well, thing I mean, I still you know I still love the theater, and I would love to to go back. Now my daughter's in college and and do some stuff. I miss it. I miss mm-hmm. the you know the camaraderie, yeah. the backstage, the coffee. I miss the Brooks's Manskisses. Right. Oh, he's the best. Um, he's. But you know, I've only done like five things with Brooks's Manskis. But um, yeah, I miss that. Mm-hmm. But uh, just you know, this has been a nice way to control my career. So you don't have to like do five workshops, and then it finally gets to Broadway, and then the critics hate it, and then it closes. You sure. Know? Sure. Um, but this like yeah, good. and as you said, you've been you and your husband, you have been going to the Cafe Carlisle for over a decade, for over, months at a time. It's crazy. Um, residencies. What do you love about that space? About performing for the people that go there? Well, I mean, the first night I ever did it, my hero of the Western world, you know, um, was all you know. Every you look out and it's like you're singing five Sondheim songs, and he's right there in the mm-hmm. second row. I mean, there is something about that. And um, Barbara Cook came the first, first night. And oh, I thought, Barbara. oh, my God, I'm going to die. And then we went upstairs to change our clothes after the show, and we hear knock, 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 and it was Barbara. I didn't know her. And she was like, that made, that was so jazzy. She said, <laughs> jazzed me. So, I mean, I, we forge relationships with people. Yeah. And people come back year after year to celebrate their birthdays. And, you know, I remember when Bobby Short used to be there, and you know, as a kid, think dreaming of going there. Mm-hmm. And you're, and the New York Times has described you guys as the like the supreme nightclub act of our time. Wow. That is that is an endorsement if you've <laughs> ever heard one. <laughs> so it must feel wonderful to be able to collaborate with your life partner, yeah. co- do music that both of you enjoy so much and then get such positive feedback like what a what a dream sort of gig you've created yeah, for yourselves very i feel very very lucky and also just seeing you know people that i my contemporary my friends music in a different setting mm-hmm. and support help to support that you know my like jason robert brown and I, we do uh, a lot of Adam Gettle, and it's just great. Yeah. So you're uh, an incredibly talented and seasoned performer. You've put out six albums, and you're also an artist. How did tell it? How did creating the art for this come together? Was this your first time that your artwork has been featured as an album cover? Y- yes. Uh, yeah. I just you know well, Joni Mitchell always designed her own covers, mm-hmm. and she considered herself a painter first, and uh, that's why I called it Portraits of Joni right. because I feel like she creates these people these stories like there's a song called Marcy that's just you could 
you can picture her, her mm-hmm. life. Um, and so I thought, because she always painted all of her things, that maybe I would try it. And so I did. Right. And I did this little oil painting, and then with the cigarette, because she did that famous thing with Absolutely. The I was going to say it. Like I don't smoke people. cigarettes, and I don't <laughs> recommend that anyone no, does. No, no. But do the you, red wine, however. The red wine is essential. That is key. Yes. yes. <laughs> is the, do you have a favorite Joni Mitchell record, a favorite Joni Mitchell song? Is it on here? Uh, well, I think that Both Sides Now is a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the few songs. I mean, that's the love actually heartbreaking right. moment. That yeah. Um, it's a song about getting to a point in your life where you realize you don't know anything about anything. Um, the Circle Game is beautiful. A Case of You is one of the greatest mm, I songs li- ever. I love that as yeah. well. Well, we have a couple of questions here from some of your fans out there. Fans? I've uh, got fans. Our, uh, Jeffrey, our friend Jeffrey, would like to know what it was like to be part of The Sound of Music Live. Oh, That's Jeffrey. That's right. Oh, Jeffrey. I said it was like going up in a rocket ship with like wonderful, fun people. I'll never forget because I was standing right next to Audra McDonald. <laughs> and, uh, and it was like... Eight seconds to live air, mm-hmm. seven seconds to live air. It was sort of like, ooh, we're going to go, and then boom, you know? Yeah. But it didn't occur to me until the night before that I had to start a song without any pitch. Oh, I had to say, okay. she climbs yeah, a tree, right. and, and there was tracks. So I never even I never had problem yeah. with getting the pitch oh, I wouldn't have even thought of that. until yeah, about absolutely. six o'clock in the morning before it happened. <laughs> Naturally, and I thought, yeah. she climbs a tree. Maybe I'll just <laughs> just do that. Yeah, but it, it worked out. And it okay. set off this whole. I mean, obviously, live presentations on TV isn't new, but it had been a long time since these live musical events had been happening on TV like that. And now it is just this huge fad where every year at least one, if not two or three. It's come wonderful. Out. Yeah. I mean, it's wonderful because w- people, you know, in Nebraska, people who don't get on airplanes mm-hmm. and come to New York, they get to see it. The only thing that was really amazing about it was, you know, we did it out in this big like airplane hangar and there were the Alps and there was the right. Thantrop house and you know people running in nun skirts to get to the part you know change their clothes right. and I kind of wish that everyone could have seen that I think they've tried to do that in the subsequent mm-hmm. ones right to show a little bit more of yeah but it's so cool for us to be able to and I'm sure as you as, to be able to see that they hire some of the bigger names celebrity to like get the attention but it seems to be all the theater actors that sort of walk away with the who was that I loved that person right. like that and whose career careers do so well after being a part of something yeah, like it that. Yeah, was it was a blast. It was a ch- just an absolute blast. And we all see each other every once in a while, and you say, yeah, we went through that mm-hmm, together. Yeah, pioneers of that. And I'll never forget, we um, Audra came back. We were sharing a, a dressing area, and she came back after she nailed Climb Every Mountain, which is the hardest song, because it's really for our, a mezzo-soprano, and she's got, but you have to hit those high notes at right. the end. And she just nailed it, and then she just came back and like pulled up her skirt and just breathed for a second. It was like I could tell. You never would know that she was nervous, but that she was glad that that was over. Right. Because you know, if you if you don't nail it, it's like. Right. And you've also you've been a part of several national touring companies with shows as well. Um, Is there? Did you did you like being a part of national tours? Is it is it hard to sort of be a part of that life? Well, I was always lucky because like. I did Cats when it first opened, mm-hmm. and so we'd go to San Francisco and sit down, sit down for, for six while. months, right. and you get a great apartment. Exactly. And I was really young, and I really, um, you know, got to really understand the country that way, as mm-hmm. opposed to doing like one nighters or something. I never did. I don't think I've ever been in a city less than three months. So I was really lucky. I don't even know if they have tours like that anymore. I don't. Not. Re- I mean, there are certain like sit down engagements, yeah. obviously, but for the most part, no. It's like they hit a city for a week or two and then move on right to the next one. Yeah. No, that was great. I mean, it got, I, I did Tommy, uh, and then I came in and did Tommy on Broadway. I played Mrs. Walker, and that right. was a rough one. I don't know why, but um, they had trouble getting this set into the smaller spaces, and it would just got to be, that was tough. I was like, that's it. Mm-hmm. And obviously, A Sunday in the Park with George was Ooh, a big I production for yours. That you got to, Did you happen to see the revival with Anna Lee Ashford? And I Jake didn't, Jonah? because I guess I can say this. Yeah, because it's on, it's on like all those sites. I'm actually a Tony nominator. I see. And so right. it was. Um, they weren't. They, they weren't, weren't eligible. Be eligible. Right. And Took I was was like out. one of those times where it's like I had to go to the theater every night. So I did, I missed it, and I'm, I heard it was wonderful. What what things have you seen recently, or the last over the last season that you've loved that you? You know, it's so weird. Um, when you're a Tony nominator, they really are. T- 
totally like serious that you don't talk about really? what you wow. feel. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess you can do it post. Post. Mm -hmm. uh, but all I can say about it is, this is my second year, that there is something extraordinary about getting to see all the work yeah, of these people that are our contemporaries that you helped support so much. It's extraordinary what people are doing. Yeah. And, we, and the acting and the singing. These kids coming out of these conservatories. Yeah, it feels like a very revolutionary time it for really Broadway. It really does. Yeah, so very exciting. Yeah. Um, our friend Alec would like to know, you've already said you would like to do some a Broadway show again. Are there any dream roles, any dream shows? Oh, gosh. Well, I don't know. I've always wanted to play Mrs. Lovett. Oh, such a um, great, great role. Yeah, I, you know, I'm just, it's, it's funny because I've been kind of in between now. I keep reminding everybody how old I am because I keep going in for parts for 40 year olds. And I'm like, I'm really not even close <laughs> to that anymore. But, um, you know, I like, I like doing new things a lot. Mm -hmm. I think there's something amazing about getting in a room and singing something for the first time when a composer has. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, when I first met Jason Robert Brown, he was 23. Um, oh, for songs, for songs, for, songs, songs for, for a new, new world. world. And right. he had me come over his house and he started playing this stuff. I thought, who is this person? Yeah. And he played songs for uh, uh, Stars in the Moon for me that he mm. wrote when he was 19 years old Crazy. about a dis, you know disillusioned rich housewife. Right. And how do you know about that? <laughs> right. That's yeah. to me, those are the most thrilling parts. To be know. there from the ground up and to have seen the show through all of its iterations. Right. And, and also meeting people and saying, I know this person is going to be massive. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that this person is going to be the, begin the beginning of the, what the theater is going to be. Absolutely. And that's happened to me a couple of times. And our friend Delphin, Hi, Delphin would like to know, who has been your biggest influence in your career? My biggest influence? Well, I always, I mean, I loved Barbara Cook. I loved the way she sang with so little effort. And it was, you know, and told the story so brilliantly. And then when she was older, you know, I went to see her uh, in smaller spaces and just never told a lie. And, mm -hmm. um, and she always said to me, launch your consonants. But I mean, really, just the, I, she, the inability of her to, to have a false moment, I think, has been very, um, as a performer, you mean, right. has been something that I try to hold on to. Was there, is there a piece of advice that you've been given by someone you've worked with that has really sunk in, that you've carried with you ever since? Well, I got to meet Rosemary Clooney. She came to see me when mm. at Feinstein's in the Regency, and she said that too. She was the same kind of person. She would say, just keep doing what you're doing because you're telling the story in a truthful way, and you're not trying to add uh, a lot of artifice to it. And, um, but Barbara was the same way. Yeah. yeah. And you and your husband, John, have created a new show that you're doing together, The Little Things You Do Together, yes. which you're taking to Cafe Carlisle, of course, right. November 7th through the 18th. Tell us a little bit about what this show will entail. Well, it's interesting because we're we're grappling with it right now. You know, it's an interesting time. <laughs> yeah. To be singing about things, and so you always have to say, do we want? Where do we want to do? Do we want to sing about something that makes people feel like, oh, I feel the same way. We're not alone, mm -hmm. or just say, let's just forget Take about everything it, and yeah. go have a ball. And so I think maybe we're going to do a little of both. Uh, he has a beautiful bossa nova record out called Sinatra and right. Joe Beam at 50. We might be doing a little of that. We're going to do a little bit of, of Joni. There's always a lot of Sondheim. Um, and so that's, yes, it's a, it's a work in progress. We still have three weeks. Do you have a, you, that's right, <laughs> take that time. Do you have a song off of here that's your favorite one to perform and sing? I think Case of You. Mm. Any, there, yeah. Any care to elaborate why that one is? It's special? one of those songs that uh, every time I sing it, I hear something different. Mm. I hear a different lyric that comes out, or I think, oh God, that's what that means, and that's a great songwriter. You yeah. Know? It's speaking of Tom Hi, would Tom. like to know. I'm sure besides Joni Mitchell, your favorite songwriter to sing. Well, I've sung a lot of Sondheim and. Um, I think that he, and because I sing a lot of jazz now, um, that I've been able to, uh, I think we were, I hate to say this, but we were the pe first people that started really jazzing up mm -hmm. Sondheim. And the way that he puts consonants and things right in the right spot, um, especially for up-tempo stuff, it's fantastic. Um, I love Jason's music. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's just some, there's, he's brilliant. Um, yeah. 
And another interesting thing about this record is so this is the first record. So it's through Ghostlight Records. Ghostlight Records. Um, but there's a new imprint label right. that you and John have mm -hmm. are going to be curating called right. Ghostlight Deluxe. How did this? I think the mission of it is incredible, which right. I would like you to elaborate on. But also, right. how did it sort of come together? Well, uh, Kirk Deutsch came. We're friends, and we have a, John and I have a radio show called Radio Deluxe, right. where we play sort of a, a cross section of jazz and standards and American Songbook and some Broadway people. But um, we did a, a record with Stephen Pasquale. He wanted to do a record That's like nice. a kind of a jazzy record a couple years ago, and yeah, I so love we that said, record. I think it's. It's really hard for people who are on Broadway and used to trying to hit the back of the house and playing a character to just sort of shed everything and say it's okay to get small and really tell a smaller story. You don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, start, you know, start where you might be finishing. Right. And also just, um, you know, picking material that's interesting for people. So we're hoping to, you know, find people like a Kelly O'Hara uh, or an, I think Stephen wants to do another one and really get in the studio and because a lot of people used to do that. I mean, Mel Torme right. made Broadway records with Broadway material. And um, so we're hoping, I think Kurt felt that um, a lot of the Broadway sing solo albums got a little lost in the big, with, you know, Book of Mormon and right. all those big, you know. So you guys are going to be there to help come lead, bring in and help collaborate and help on? Sit and, and, and say, yeah, let's, what is this record? What do you want to say at this point in your life? Right. And, you know, because Barbara Cook did that. She made all those great totally. records, right. even when she was still working on Broadway. And we have those forever. I think it's, yeah. I think it's a great mission. I think Good. it's so exciting for Good. our... We approve. Good. Good. <laughs> um, and we approve of everything that you are doing, including Portraits of Joni, which you can buy right now. You can listen to it on Spotify. You can download it on iTunes. Make sure you get it. And November 7th through the 18th, you guys will be at the Cafe Carlisle with your new show, The Little Things You Do. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been such a Thank pleasure you. speaking with you. I know what I'm going to do now. I'm it's 5 o'clock every night. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Please join in. I will. Um, make sure you guys get the CD and also tune in tomorrow for this week's last episode of Live at Five. Thank Thanks. you again so much. Thanks.